Ties of Faith. I'm your host, Irv DeSmet. And I'm your co-host, Frank Brilliant. Well, Frank, hold on to your hat. Oh, whoops, sorry, you don't have a hat. But if you did, I'd advise you to hold on to it because we have an, we're going to have a visitor this morning that's really going to be something. He's a Catholic priest, a pastor of Holy Spirit Catholic Church in Fremont, and he also does magic tricks to explain the meanings of the gospel. <gasps> How about that, pal? Well, I'm a showman too. Do you want me to show you some tricks Not and right tell you now. some jokes and maybe sing some songs later? Not right now. But I mean, I could do it right now if you want, or I could wait till later. I'd prefer that you wait for Father Matthew, okay? Okay, okay. Right. Well, let's bring him on. Okay, I see him right now. Father Matthew, good to Hi, see you. Frank. Hi, Frank. Yeah. Yeah, Great to see you. <laughs> you like my tie? Of course, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's one of our latest designs. It's kind of psychedelic blue, red, you know. I designed it myself back at the factory right over there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of good people over there. We like to kind of spread the word of our quality products. Maybe put in a few plugs here on the show. Tie, tie, tie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As you can gather, Frank, uh, Father Matthew, Frank is uh, he's a very successful businessman, but I'm trying to encourage him to follow uh, a, a spiritual path and, and understand about the love of Jesus Christ. And so I just like to- I'm trying to decide what name I should give for this tie. You know, Fra it's got uh, hold, hey, Frank, so many colors. Frank, yeah. Uh, it's not your turn right now, okay? Oh. We, have, we have a guest here. Can't, my tie, no? So oh, I, right. want to, I want to, Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh, 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 yeah, yeah. Shh, shh, I'm gonna be quiet right now. I'm gonna be quiet. Starting Let's now. Be quiet. Thank you. Go. So Father Matthew, how did you start getting into this magic show thing? You know, when I was very young, like uh, 11 years old, I read the biography of St. John Bosco, popularly known as Don Bosco. He lived in Italy, primarily in Turin, about a century ago, and he's also the founder of the Salesian Congregation. So when he was very young, he was not going to school, they were very poor, he was grazing cattle, and he would tell his friends who were also grazing cattle that he would do a magic trick if they listened to his homily that he heard from previous Sunday, or he would do a tightrope walking if they would pray the rosary with him. He would so do a tightrope walk? Yeah, he would do that. And <laughs> he was brilliant, he was brilliant. So I thought here is little Johnny Bosco attracting other young people <laughs> to God through right. magic and little circus. Yes. And I said one day, I want to be like him. That was my first inspiration. And so when I later joined the Salesian Order and I was in the novitiate at the age of 19, I, I, I found a book called Keep Busy and Be Cheerful. And there were a lot of uh, little tricks that we could really make so with the keep, hands on. Keep busy and be cheerful, cheerful, is that correct? Yes, exactly. I wanted to be cheerful. Wow. So I started doing some tricks for my friends. And soon enough, I was going out to the villages doing tricks for the children. And uh, so I got uh, started in that way. So it's kind of like it was became a ministry, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So what happened was I found, you know, magic attracts people. And so sure. I said, you know, I could develop that and use it in my ministry. So in the earlier times when I used to be in the mission areas of Northeast India, we would announce there would be a magic show. And, you know, people would come, uh, Catholics, non-Catholics, mm -hmm. they would all come. And so I would sandwich my message between magic tricks. So I would perform my say 10 minutes of magic, then I would give a message, then I would do another 10 minutes of magic. And in that way, people would be listening very attentively. And so that became a ministry in that way. Then I developed what is known as gospel magic. And I said, I can use, you know, some of these magic tricks to explain the gospel message to children and people. Wonderful. And so I do that even today. Wowie, wowie, wowie. Now, Father Matthew, do you come from a big church? 
That's right. Yeah, I come from a big business, and I use jokes that I sandwich the business message in between, so it makes it more palatable. So it's I, similar to what you do, I think. Uh, Frank, I agree with you. I yeah. never give a homily without a joke. I always use stories and jokes mm -hmm. because it reaches to the hearts of the people. Yeah, I used to tell people at business meetings, you know, where I have to make some big decisions. They say, I used to be indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. What? <laughs> it's hysterical. People go nuts. Isn't that fun? Well, funny, funnier. Uh, possibly, but you know, again, I just want to caution you. It's I know funny. you're enthusiastic, and I, Give you know, little, Father Matthew you know, is a very joyful person, and I think it's rubbing off on you. But so I want to compare and contrast a little bit about the joy situation. Big business, big church. Well, big joy, and let's talk about that first. Okay. Well, Father Matthew, you strike me as being a very joyful person. Of course, so, I am. Yeah. As a as a priest, I mean, how important is that to be joyful? And it's indeed very, very important to be a joyful priest because uh, Francis D. Sales, you know, the Saint Francis D. Sales used to say, "You attract more flies with a spool full of honey than a barrel full of vinegar." And when you are sweet and honey, people are attracted to you. And when people are attracted to you, you're able to share God's love and God's message. So uh, I always like to tell jokes wherever I am. For example, um, you know, I do magic and immediately after a magic show, some people would come and tell me, Father, can you make my spouse disappear? <laughs> and, and, you, <laughs> and you know, when I do magic tricks for the priest, what do they say? Can you make my bishop disappear? <laughs> <laughs> they always want someone to yeah. be dis uh, to disappear. So the joy. Sometimes they say, "Can you disappear?" <laughs> I know they're only joking, but uh, you know it's kind of funny. Okay. Yeah. So the back to joy now. Or do you think they're serious? I want to. I want to compare. I'm going to get to your joy in a second. Okay. But Father Matthew, you know the joy that you have, that you want to share with uh, all the peoples to, sure. uh, in the gospel. That's based on a deep connection with Jesus. Absolutely, and, yeah. absolutely. So when you have Jesus in your heart and you have a very intimate personal relationship with Christ, you will be joyful because you know, you have everything. If you have God in you and you are part of God, naturally you'll be very happy, very joyful right, person. Right. And uh, secondly, you know, uh, Jesus comes to, across to me as a very happy, joyful person, mm. beaming with joy. Unfortunately, we do not see too many pictures yeah. of Jesus, you know, laughing, smiling. Uh, think of that, uh, uh, that case where Jesus is telling the audience, take out the beam from your eyes before you go and remove a splinter from a neighbor's eye. Yeah. That was exaggeration, humor, uh, you yes. know. And Jesus told so many funny stories. And uh, Jesus, I believe, was truly a, a humorous, joyful, happy person. And that's what I want to be. And I wish everyone would be happy. Yeah. Well, let's see about, let's, let's check with Frank. Now, Frank, how's your, how would you define your joy? I know, would it be monetary, in monetary terms? Well, I mean, like Jesus, you could kind of argue that he was, did a little bit of stand-up. You know, I mean, he had a message, he had a message, but I mean, he was a funny guy, you know? And I see myself doing the same thing. Like some people say, hey, Frank, that's kind of a loud tie. I mean, look, look at this thing, you know? People kind of loud, I mean, that's funny too. Ha! <laughs> you know? And then uh, also, I like to reminisce with people I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what? Are you doing your Pilates there, Frank? I mean, <laughs> take it easy, pal. Okay, uh, I'm okay. Geez, come, on, you know, come on, come on back. Change the subject. Uh, change, I will, but uh, change the so subject. Father Matthew, I'm, we're trying to, you know, he's, he's so successful in the material world, but a lot of times when we get into discussions about, is he in the, in the shallow water? Yes. Or does he enter the deep water where the real, uh, the real meaning of life is? And so uh, I hope he comes back. I guess he's, uh, He's taking a pretty pretty bad hit. There he is. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll yeah. tell you what. I'm back, uh, I'm back. Thanks for coming back, and, yeah. and again, check check your core. I mean, that's why we go to Pilates classes. I don't think you've been to Pilates lately. But uh, let's, let's, let's have a magic trick. Sure. Come on. I got some pom-pom here. I got these pom-poms from Hong Kong. Pom-poms from Hong Kong. So as you can see, I have a, a blue pom-pom and a yellow pom-pom a red pom pom and a white pom pom. Now the blue pom pom is connected to the yellow pom pom. Yep. Uh, the yellow pom pom is connected to the blue pom pom, but the blue pom pom is also connected to the red pom pom, red pom pom to the white pom pom, white pom pom to the red pom pom. Yes. Now, yep. the red pom pom is also connected to the yellow pom pom, 
yellow pom-pom to the blue pom-pom. Right. The blue pom-pom is also connected to the white pom-pom. And yeah. like this, we all need to be connected, connected yeah. with yeah. God. Yes, okay? yes. Um, Clearly. What happens is sometimes, you know, we b break our relationship with God. Could you take a, a moment and just pull that out? Yes. Pull it out. Pull okay, it out. okay, okay. Good job. Good job of breaking it apart. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what? Hey, <laughs> what'd you do? I don't know. Okay. You broke you his magic inside. trick. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, some people think there is some invisible thread that goes around. There's none of that there. What? So, this is how do we cut off our relationship with God? Through sin. Yes. You know, when we uh, commit sin, we are broken away. And so we need to put back together. How do you come back to God again? Through the sacrament of confession, once again. No, you put money in the collection plate. <laughs> what, what did you say, Father Matthew? I, I, right. Frank, Frank, uh, Frank's got his mind on money. What did you say? How we so through the sacrament of reconciliation, rest. we can be once again connected with God, and also uh, we can patch up our relationship with our neighbors. Okay. So w once again, have a look here. The red pomum is connected to the white pomum. White pomum and red pomum are connected. The red pomum is connected to the blue pomum. Blue pomum is connected to the yellow pomum. Yellow pomum to the blue pomum. Blue pomum to the white pomum. White pomum to the red pomum. Wonderful. As these pomums are all connected, we need to be connected with God and we need to be connected with one another. And that's what Jesus said. Wonderful. Love of God and love of neighbor. How about that, Frank? You have to dominate we Whatever are you're working on, you have to be a winner. Huh. That's how you be connected, right. right? You know. You'll get your chance a little you know, later. I feel like a winner. What about you? Well, huh? I want to find out uh, how, how Father Matthew became a priest. Okay. So, what is your vocation story? It's you're a wonderful priest, and it's, thank you so much for that. It's very interesting. So, when I was very young, like uh, nine years old, ten years old, I used to be an altar boy, and I wanted to be like the parish priest. Then I had also my father's brother, my uncle, who was a priest and a monsignor. And I wanted to be like him one day. And so I had that inkling. And when I was in the sixth grade, a priest came, a Salesian priest, came and talked to us, all the kids, and said, those who want to become priests, give names. I went and gave my name. I was only 11 years old at that time. Wow. Yeah. Then I was invited along with my dad for an interview. Then we went for a, a vocation camp and then was accepted. So I mm. went to a minor seminary or so-called apostolic school at the age of 11. I go to camp for vacation as well. So maybe we have something in common. Mm, that's very different, Frank. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> nice try, Frank. What? Yeah. What kind of camp is it? Like money well, making, we, uh, motorcycles venture capital? and speed boats mm. and, you know, expensive sports cars, you know, at the camp. It's a little bit different. Luxury accommodations, you know. Your formation in those Living large, living large. Ah! So what I'm talking is about the discernment, what yes. God has in store for you. Right. So on completing my high school, I went all the way to the northeastern part of India where I studied in the seminary. I completed my philosophy. I uh, completed my theology and was ordained a priest in the year 1987. Wow. And so that's my yeah. vocation story starting. And it's been wonderful ever since. I've been a priest for 28 years in the church and it gives me a lot of enthusiasm, joy to serve yeah. God every day. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. is powerful. It can change a culture. It can change a whole generation. It can impact the entire globe. 
Two years ago, Shalom World TV was a dream. Today, it's a reality. A commercial-free, high-definition television network broadcasting from the United States of America, reaching 375 million English-speaking people around the globe. We want to reach to the ends of the earth. Throughout the year, Shalom missionaries work day and night to accomplish this mission, to produce programs that evangelize the culture. What is wrong with Connor's Tonight on Seekers. I can make time for you. For divine knowledge. We want to continue this mission. We want to produce more programs to impact this generation positively. Will you be with us? Can you take a commitment of donating just $25 a month for the next 12 months? We assure you of our prayers. Visit shalomworld.org slash donate today. We thank you for your generosity. Well, I know that uh, your, your church is considered to be, you know, it's alive, it's alive with people that are really fully alive and in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and here we have Frank, uh, this is Thai Factory, and it's a, he, he describes it as a mega business, I guess. And did you want to have a chance to converse with Father Matthew about what makes his mega church alive and a giving place? And I don't know about your, your factory. What about well, we employ 90% of the people in Brilliant City, mm -hmm. and they're happy to work here. It's a wonderful place to work. We have ping pong tables, and we let people go at 6 p.m. on Fridays. So we're very generous with our compensation, our benefits, and we think people really appreciate what we're doing here at this business. And we make about 30,000 ties a month. How do you know that they're happy uh, with, with the way you run things? Well, number one, they laugh at my jokes. You know, <laughs> kind of like that one, uh, I like to reminisce with people I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, things like that. They tell me I'm great. You know, you know, and, Frank. Uh, yeah. Just because you laugh or you make people laugh, it's not necessarily they are joyful. A joy is a, a matter of that is within. Okay, the huh. the joy, the peace, the love comes from within, not from just externals. It, joy or happiness is an inside job. Oh. Okay? Uh, so you were asking earlier about my uh, parish. Actually, my yeah. parish is uh, 128 years old. Founded wow. in. Uh, in 1886, it was a Portuguese church originally. Now we have a, a predominantly people from every part of the world. It's a multi-ethnic community and we are fast growing. Mm. Uh, I've been pastor there for the last nine years and our parish mission statement is be spirit-filled and make disciples. So that's based on the new evangelization that the popes have been talking about. What is all this new evangelization mm -hmm. about? Yeah. That is about making disciples. So it has got the three focus. The first is to make the already Catholics ever better. Yes. And then focus on people following away Catholics, you know, who are Catholics once, but they're right. no more practicing. Yes. Give some amount of attention to bring them back. And yeah. thirdly, who have not heard the name of Christ or who are not been uh, preached upon. So yeah, I, you know, this evangelization word, uh, what it really is, it's just a fancy name for marketing. You know, I mean, really, what we're doing out there is we're selling ideas, we're selling products, you know. You and I, Father, I mean, we're pushing a product, you know. That's you're, correct. You're selling a message uh, but and I, you're marketing yourself. Yeah. And that's what we do. We have a strong marketing program. We're on social media, we're in a lot of magazines. We spend quite a bit of money, tens of millions of dollars on marketing programs. You've probably seen some billboards coming into Brilliant City this morning. Actually, church definitely has to use some of these marketing media uh, oh, methods. Yeah. So, so I've been using a lot of techniques and tricks yeah. to let's, reach let's, out to people. Let's, let's yeah. listen to this now and okay, then we'll yeah. see what okay. you're up to. Okay, so you know, Easter and Christmas is a time when uh, a lot of people come. You know, I call them uh, CEOs. Uh, Christmas, Christmas, Easter, Easter, only Catholics. <laughs> and so we take advantage. So normally on a week, we can we get about 5,000 people. But for Christmas and Easter, there will be 10,000 people. So what do we do? We have great warmth and hospitality and welcome. And then when they go after the mass on Christmas or Easter, they get a gift. Gift of a book or a CD that they can listen. So it is for mm. you know, touching their hearts so that they will come back again. So we have been giving away uh, gifts like a good CD for them to listen to or good inspirational books. That's book beautiful. That will That's bring beautiful. Them back, I, back. I do podcasts for my employees. I talk about prophets, 
forecasts, budgeting, and how we're trouncing the competition. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, Frank, another uh, thing that we are doing now is called drive-through prayer. Uh, Frank, I'm sure you have heard drive-through huh. coffee. Uh, yeah, 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 tell me more. Fast food. But yeah. we have now drive through prayer here to Holy Spirit in wow. Fremont. So how what, does that work? Listen, how this works, yeah, Frank. Yeah, I, I might get some ideas and, here. And see if, it's, if it's, see if it's a deep, a, a way to get a deep connection with people instead of perhaps a surfacey uh, razzmatazz approach for more Thai sales. So, so, so what we do is we have uh, collected about 20, 25 volunteers who are prayer ministers who are very well trained. And we have a volunteer at the road standing with a sign arrow saying the drive through prayer open. And then just people drive through there. We have two or three ministers waiting for them and they stop the car. These ministers walk up to the car and ask them, what do you want me to pray? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to pray for you? And they will say, I want to pray for healing or I want mm -hmm. to pray that I will get a job or I want to pray that I will be at peace. So various intentions. So we pray for three or four minutes over them and sometimes we can see uh, tears, tears trickling down mm -hmm. and they are very much touched by God. We give them a little prayer card, a prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. Mm -hmm. At the back of the card is the mass timings. And we tell them, if you feel like coming back, please do come back. And mm -hmm. if their favors are answered by God, miracles do take place and they come back sometimes for prayer, sometimes mm -hmm. come back to church. So we are in many, many ways trying to attract more and more people to the church. And one of the most important thing is the warmth and the hospitality and the message, you know, every Sunday we really take time out to prepare our message, the, the, the homily. Secondly, music is very important to attract people. You know, young people like good music. Yes, I oh, know, Frank, yeah. you love music. So we have yeah. good music, people do come. So yeah. in every way possible, we are trying to uh, make our parish grow and make it an amazing parish. Well, I really parish. like what you're saying about hospitality. Last Christmas, we gave out free wassail and we had some ties with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on it. It was incredible, it was a hot seller. We only increased our margins by 30% on those, which normally we do about 50. So we cut our margins, gave out free wassail, and sold a lot of ties. It was a great season for us, you know? Well, okay, Frank, that's a good way that you're trying to grow your business, but let's consider some more ways that Father Matthew is growing his church. Well, Father Matthew, let's see another magic trick. Magic. Woo, woo, woo. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. That is incredible! That's insanity! <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh yeah, yeah. What's happening? Woo! <laughs> wow! I gotta get me one of those! Wow! <laughs> Woo! Well, then, can you? Join yes. me here. Yes. Why don't you hold on to the ends? All right. Here, over here. Yes. All right. And then we are going to just float slowly like a Harry Potter, okay? Yeah. You're... Hey, what's going on here? Whoa! Man, I got it. Let me. That's There's nuts. nothing under there. <laughs> oh, gee. That's okay. amazing. How do you do that? You want, lift, you want to lift and see? Just lift your. Lift the corner, just lift your corner and see anything? Gotta be something No, going I don't see a thing. There. Okay, so leave your hand, fishy. leave your hand. All right. I'm gonna wow. go over here now. Whoa! Amazing. Frank is ha. stunned. Frank is stunned. Ha! 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 Okay, here we go. There you go. Thank wee, you, Frank. Wee, wee, wee. Thank you. Father, that was a tremendous magic trick. Thank now, you. how does a floating table relate to a gospel message or a message for people? Interesting, I can use any props in many different ways. Um, for example, we need to rise above the mediocrity. Mm -hmm. uh, in the book of Revelation, we read, if you are neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out from my mouth, which means we have to be really hot you know, enthusiastic, yes. vibrant, yeah. rising above ordinary yeah. means. Uh, Get with the program. Let it yeah. ha let it affect you. Yeah. So that yeah. that comes to in anything that you do, Frank. In your business, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you cannot be just mediocre. Negative. You have to be excellent. 
And even as a pastor, I have to be an excellent pastor. Yes. You as a parishioner, you have to be an excellent uh, parishioner. Yeah. So in everything Contribute. that you do, we need to bring a life of excellence, you know, and we have to be enthusiastic. You know, when you are enthusiastic, you know, we are full of God and yeah. we will be vibrant in whatever you do, that enthusiasm, that vibrancy will come about. That's, why, then, I, uh, that's why I scream a lot when I'm at work. I go, great job. <laughs> People love that, constant. Uh, it's uh, really, keep it up there and excellence. No. Mediocrity is not good. required. I agree with you, Frank. When you say good things about people, you yeah. know, when you uplift people, they feel elated and they will perform better even in your business. Yeah. And one of us, a pastor, I always go around just saying thank you to people all the time, to our staff, to parishioners, just uploading. I don't know how many times I say thank you to people mm. every day and that uplifts people, you know, they feel good. And all of us are called to uplift other people, you know, and not yeah. remain just static or down, but we are supposed to rise above mediocrity and do a life of excellence. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I think it might be beneficial for our, our pal here to ha ask you, Father, to how, does, how do we develop a relationship with Jesus Christ? What would you say? It's a very good question. Um, you know, how do we re uh, relate with the people? How do we develop an intimate relationship with any human being? We need a lot of time, a lot of yeah. conversation, good communication. So prayer is communication. And, um, you know, when you spend a lot of time with God in prayer, you're communicating with God. God understands you, you understand God. And secondly, many people will think that if they go to church or they take a lot of this prayer book, they finish one, put it away, next, put it away, another, put it away. Yeah. And they think they have said a lot of prayer and that's enough. Right. No, they need also to have certain amount of silence listen to God. Yeah. But today we are all so busy. I see all the time, you know, people with uh, earphones, some others with uh, Bluetooth. Even I see people coming to church with uh, yep. that yeah. thing sticking upon. They call it Bluetooth. I don't yeah, know why they yeah, call some, it even a Bluetooth. I some device. No <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. So when they come in the church, if they have a Bluetooth, they are not listening to the word of God or God speaking to them. They are listening to what is going on outside or they are listening to music or something else. Yeah. So we need to spend time in total silence to listen to God and what God is speaking. And in that way, we can develop a genuine in love relationship with God. Mm. So what happens when you have that type of uh, love relationship with God? Number one, you will be secure because you know, you are friendly with the God and if God be for us, who can be against us? Right. Saint Paul says. Right. So uh, security, serenity, peace, love, joy, you know, nothing to worry, that serenity is there. Those are uh, the results of good uh, loving personal relationship with God. What hinders the relationship is one is pride. Thinking that I am somebody, I don't need God. I have everything. Frank is listening. That's wonderful. Ye yes, that's he's, good. He's, because he's, people with a lot of money, sometimes they think money is their God. I don't need God because they make money their God. Frank, I'm not talking to you about that. Okay? Of course you're not. A good of course person. not. Negative. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what is important is our reliance on God. So when you humble ourselves, and put our trust in God, God is happy with us. And God wants our relationship. Secondly, it is the hurriedness. We live in a time when life is so hectic. You know, life is moving so fast and they don't have much time to relate well uh, with God. Yeah. And so if you want to have a good relationship with God, you need time every day. Spend some time talking to God, listening to God then you will develop a good relationship. Well, with I think on that tone, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask Frank to think about what you said, Father, and spend a little time in silence now, reflecting, because I'm, I'm going to say goodbye to, to Father, Father Matthew. He's got to okay. go now. I'm going to go silent now. So, thank you, Father Matthew, so, so much. For thank you, Irving. Mean, wonderful, nice meeting you. Yeah, Hi, yeah. Frank. Bye-bye. Nice you. to meet you, Father. I'll work on him. I think I got the message. Thank you. Frank, that was a pretty amazing time with Father Matthew. You know, I learned uh, that I can be a joyful person and follow Jesus Christ at the same time. And to me, that's what everybody should yeah. realize. I thought religion was all serious, dour, business, kind of depressing. And but I guess not. That's what you're going to take with you? That's a big takeaway, you know, and of course, the marketing ideas he had and increasing the enthusiasm around the factory, those are some big ones. 
We got some profit numbers we're trying to hit for this quarter. We're going right. to hope we're going to make it. Maybe that will help. All right. Yeah. Hey, but Frank, we're out of time. But please, don't, don't forget, forget those ties of faith. faith.